Hello and welcome back to another collector's review. Today I have the Henshin Brace, or the Go-Go -Go Brace, or the Bulkin Brace, or just the Mercury Morpher from Power Rangers Operation Overdrive slash Go-Go Sentai Bulkenger. Um, that was the name, obviously, in Japan uh, before it was brought here to America. We call it Power Rangers Operation Overdrive, which wasn't a bad series. It was actually a pretty decent series. Um, the theme song sucked. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was about it. I mean, the rest of the series is actually pretty good, aside from maybe a couple of uh, slapstick episodes, uh, including an episode where the Power Rangers meet Thor because they need his hammer, because the hammer is part of one of the treasures that they're collecting. So that was weird, and it looked nothing like Thor, at least nothing what you would expect Thor to look like. Anyway, we're reviewing the... Henshin Brace, or the Mercury Morpher for the Silver Ranger, or Boken Silver. Um, actually, here in America, we called him the Mercury Ranger. Why, I don't know. Maybe because they figured that Silver Ranger was just too boring, because we've had Silver Rangers before. Again, it's basically like going back to that same thing to where, well, we've got to change just enough to make it different. Because uh, even when it came to uh, Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue... Um, there was there was no Silver Ranger. There was the Titanium Ranger didn't exist. So uh, obviously they created him for the series because they figured five Rangers wasn't enough. Um, so they created the sixth Ranger. He called him the Titanium Ranger, but he is classified as a Silver Ranger. Um, so uh, so between that and uh, now and then the Mercury Ranger, I guess like I said, I guess Silver was just too dull, too boring for them. So they had to change the name a little bit. But that's fine. Awesome Ranger. Um, obviously way better in Gogo Sentai Bokenger. Um, I like that version of the series a lot better. Uh, though Power Rangers Operation Overdrive is a, still a good series. Um, they could have done a little bit better with the actor who played, um, the Mercury Ranger. I believe, um, he just wasn't suited for it. He just didn't fit the part. He wasn't tall enough for one. And uh, for two, he just wasn't that great an actor. He just always seemed kind of, kind of spaced out, looking everywhere. It, it was it was just a really odd choice for uh, for the um, for the Mercury Ranger or uh, Boken Silver. But uh, I'm going to res I'm going to review his Henshin brace today, the Mercury Morpher. Now, as you see, it fits around my wrist rather nicely. This is the original wrist strap, and this is the Bandai of Japan version of the toy. Um, it is very, very well detailed. I mean, this is probably one of the best detailed morphers that they've put out. I mean, it's got, it's got everything there. The paint detail, um, the speaker placement is really, really smart. I like the speaker placement. Uh, the on-off switch is also very uh, uh, craftily placed on here to where you can't see it. It's not visible. It is, they actually painted it black like the majority of the rest of the toy. They didn't make it red or bright orange or anything. Nothing that stood out and said, oh, look, there's an on switch to this toy. Um, which, again, it's a toy. It's supposed to have an on and off switch. Some of these toys don't have on off switches, but what are you going to do? I prefer... Um, I prefer these, these, all these devices to have on-off switches. I've said that before in the past, um, because uh, when you have one that does not have an on-off switch, you just insert the battery and it goes, you're not really sure whether or not the device, the toy, is still drawing energy from that battery, even when it's not in use. So, uh, but for the most part, that is the case to where it's drawing energy from the battery and it drains your battery, literally like within the first couple of weeks of putting the battery in. So, and it gets really annoying have to take the battery out and put it back in. So this is really, really ingenious. Um, it is uh, copyright 2006. Um, Gogo Sentai Bokenger came out in 2005 in Japan. Um, but it ran, it was actually around the end of 2005 and ran all the way through 2006. We here in America didn't get it until 2007. Um, but... Like I said, this is the Bandai of Japan version, uh, Bandai 2006. It's got a serial number, Bandai logo. It takes two AAA batteries, which uh, isn't bad. Isn't bad at all. Um, and uh, that's about, about it for how it's powered. Let's go ahead and uh, turn this sucker on. On switch, like I said, is right here. And when I turn it on, 
you're going to see an electronic display here. This is what really makes this, uh, this item unique. And they've got people playing music outside. Isn't that lovely? But uh, as I've said before, some of these morphers, when you turn the device on, um, it usually has like a, uh, a beeping sound, an, ind an indication sound to let you know the device is still on. That way you know to turn it off. That way you're not wasting the battery power. This one doesn't beep. Um, however, it does show random flashes on the electronic display, on the, on the numeric display. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and uh, it always shows 55, the number 55. I don't really know what the significance is of that. Um, 55 miles an hour? Maybe, I don't know, uh, because obviously uh, the Mecha or the Zords from this series, uh, they were vehicles. So once again, a vehicle-based series, which again, there's nothing wrong with that. The vehicle-based series are fine, I guess, um, ex except for Car Ranger slash Turbo. Um, the movie was okay, but the series was awful. Um, and the Japanese series, Car Ranger, uh, it's, it's hard to even say it, but it was even worse than the American version. That was definitely one of the cases where it was done better here in America. Um, and uh, if you leave it on, this device on for more than 60 seconds, it will give you a small uh, double beep, if you didn't hear that. But um, this nice little uh, encased clear facing can be opened with the button right here. And it does stay open. It's on like a little spring. So, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, like flip open so hard to where it's going to break or anything like that. You just hit it and it flips open. So yeah, there's, there's the indication beep along with the, uh, the electronic flashing. Uh, numerical display. Um, there's a lot of functions to this, believe it or not. It doesn't look like there would be because you see a button here, a button here, um, a turn dial, and this right here in the center is actually uh, the uh, the morphing uh, um, initiation button. So uh, altogether, one, two, uh, three, four buttons if you include the lever to open that opens the clear display, um, and then of course this dial. The dial comes into play there's some kind of game on here, like some kind of uh, memory game, I believe. But because I don't speak Japanese very well, I, uh, I don't really understand what it's saying or where it wants, what, what it wants me to do for the game. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip over the game part of this, uh, of this review, because uh, if anybody out there buys it yourself, go ahead and just test it out and play with it. See if you can figure it out, because I have trouble figuring it out. Um, but when you turn the dial anyhow, it does nothing at first. But it does have a clicking sound, letting you know that you are turning it and it's locking into positions. Hit one of these buttons first, like say the little red button with the, um, which what I guess looks like the Megazord on it. You hit that. And you get this sound. The electronic display starts flashing wildly. You turn this, and every time you turn it, it'll count up. Now, it'll keep counting up from 1 to 13. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Hit the center button. Sound like it said fighting formation. So that, that obviously sounded like I just formed the Megazord right there. <laughs> so um, I figured that out at least. <laughs> the go, however, you hit that and then hit the button. Just says go, go. Um, and obviously, like I said, if you hit the uh, if you hit the go and then start changing the dial, that's what starts the game, I believe. Um, but the uh, normal morphing sequence, just to morph, you don't really have to hit anything at all. You simply power on the device, flip up the clear, uh, the clear cover, and you hit the button right there. You don't hit nothing else, you just hit the button. And that is the morphing sequence. Um, sounds exactly like it does from the show. Uh, the, the Japanese version, Go Go Sentai Boken, or not Power Rangers Operation Overdrive. In Operation Overdrive, they changed the sound effects that uh, that happen when when the Rangers morph 
because they pretty much changed the morphing sequences entirely, which I thought was strange. Um, but uh, again, the strap is long enough, big enough. The original strap, you can uh, you can pretty much wear this as long as uh, your wrists aren't too terribly big. Mine aren't, but there's still some space there. It's where I could, uh, if even if my wrist was bigger, I could basically extend it. So not really a problem at all. So when they morph, he simply hits this with his thumb and says, go, go changer, start up. Puts his hand out and hits. But it helps if the device is off. So I'm gonna try this again. Go, go changer, start up. Then he would snap his fingers and throw his hand to the left and then he would basically morph. Um, and like I said, at least he did in the Japanese version. The American version of the morph um, wasn't as they added too much CG to it, and it just seemed like it took too long and took away from it took away from the impact. When I, I kind of prefer the instant morphs to where it literally only takes like a couple of seconds. When you when they have to use a bunch of CG and it cuts away uh, to a completely different frame, and and the Rangers are doing all this other extra unnecessary stuff, like in Operation Overdrive, uh, with their morphing sequences. It goes into like a uh, a special effect uh, frame to where obviously there's a blue screen behind them and they're doing all these uh, all these motions and uh, it, it, it was really weird. It was basically the same thing with uh, uh, with uh, Decker Ranger or our Power Rangers SPD. Um, they had to do all these uh, uh, these jumps and flips and uh, they had to fly backwards into their suit and it's like that's cool and all, but it was just it's just not necessary. It takes up too much too much airtime. Um, and that's probably part of Saban's plan was just to take up more airtime just with the morphing sequence because he figures kids like it. Kids like like special effects. They like flashing lights, like more more motion. They like all that. Um, but again, I prefer the more instant transformation sequences. Um, but again, uh, I picked this up on eBay like I do everything. That's why I said and again because and again it's from eBay. I get pretty much everything from eBay. Uh, when it comes to uh, Super Sentai or Power Rangers, um, this was uh, this was pricey. Uh, this one cost me almost ninety dollars on eBay, and I've had it for uh, a good couple of years. I'd say about about two and a half years now uh, is when I got this, and um, it's used. Obviously, it didn't come with the box, but at least it did come with the original strap, and uh, it was basically near perfect condition. There was really nothing wrong with it, aside from maybe some. Uh, Maybe some paint chipping, like some paint wear here and there, but uh, nothing uh, nothing you can't touch up or fix yourself. Um, but uh, this is one of my more favorite uh, wrist changers um, from, uh, from Power Rangers, Super Sentai, whatever have you. I do like the Mercury Ranger or Boken Silver. I'd like to do a cosplay of that. He's pretty much the, um, the only... Silver Ranger, I would cosplay as, aside from Gokai Silver, or the uh, Silver Super Mega Force Ranger. Um, but of course, uh, again, that's getting into uh, to more territory I don't want to talk about right now. You all know how I feel about Super Mega Force, um, or Super Mega Force. <clears throat> but anyway, another quick review. I don't want to let these drag out, because I have, the ha I have a habit of doing that. Um, and of course, uh, stumbling over my own words, and taking forever doing that too, so... Uh, I don't even know what I'm looking at over there. What am I looking at? Oh, camera's over here. Anyway, guys, that was the Gogo -Go Changer or the Mercury Morpher from Gogo -Go Sentai Bokenger slash Power Rangers Operation Overdrive um, of the uh, Boken Silver or the Mercury Ranger. So, uh, again, just quick little demonstration, quick little review. That's really all I got for you guys this week. Um, more stuff coming soon. Uh, collector's reviews, more news and updates. And even Comic-Con stuff is coming up soon. So I think it's like, I think we're now into uh, May. And uh, by probably by the point that I upload this video. So yeah, so that means that uh, Wizard World Columbus will be like about a month away from the time that this is uploaded. So I'm getting excited. Um, I'm not going to be cosplaying as a ranger this time around, believe it or not. Because uh, the last three times I've been to con, it's been... Um, it's been ranger cosplay pretty much the whole time and it's hard to walk around and get good 
video and uh, and pictures of cosplayers when you're either wearing or holding a uh, Super Sentai helmet. Uh, these things are kind of bulky and get in the way sometimes, but uh, this time around I'm going to be cosplaying as uh, something else that's near and dear to my heart. I'm going to do a Dragon Ball cosplay. I'm going to be uh, Future Trunks. So um, if you guys want to see that cosplay, let me know in the comments below, please. I'm always looking for feedback. Um, let me know if you want to just have me put on the costume and take a quick photo and uh, I'll show it to you guys or just a quick video just letting you guys and it's showing you guys what the costume looks like because um, it's almost complete. Um, I'm working on the belt as of right now um, and after the belt uh, the only thing I got left to work on is getting the Capsule Corporation patch put on the denim jacket that I ordered and I got to starch that collar up. I got to starch that bad boy like crazy so um, a little bit of work left to do on that. But, uh, but don't worry, I'll be cosplaying as uh, Super Sentai and uh, Power Rangers uh, much more in later Comic-Cons. But this time, I'm just taking it easy uh, so I can get plenty of good footage and, uh, and pictures of cosplayers and whatnot for all of you guys on YouTube. So, uh, once again, another collector's review. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you guys haven't already. You all know the deal. Help me out. Everything is appreciated, guys. Help me grow. Later.